All right, it's good to be in God's house. Good to have you here this morning. And I want to uh, share an important the scripture that a lot of people misinterpret as being written for weak Christians. That's what they consider it for, okay? I'm not saying they're weak, I'm just saying it's one thing. They have it, and that is and that is the fifth chapter of Matthew, the Beatitudes. Do you realize how many people I talk to that think the Beatitudes is just a comfort uh, a comfort scripture for people that are weak in their relationship with God? They do. They think that it's well, it's just some comfort scripture. Well, I got news for you. These weren't you weren't being called weak. In these scriptures, you were being exonerated by God. He huh? said in the third in, in the third verse, it said, "Blessed." It said, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God." Everybody thinks that's for that poor person that can just barely serve God. Come on. They got this idea that that's just for someone that just struggles. But in the Amplified Bible says it like this. Blessed, happy, to be envied, spiritually prosperous, with life, joy, and satisfaction of God's favor, of salvation. Yes. Blessed is that person. Blessed are you in your spirit. And it said, goes on to say, uh, are the poor in spirit. That word poor means humble. Amen. Come on. It doesn't mean that you're weak or you're poor or, or you're just barely serving God. He's saying those are those that are humble. What does humble mean? Humble means that, that you bow before God. You put God first and self last. You put God above all of your family. You put God above everything in your life. And you humble yourself before God and make God first in your life. It doesn't mean that you're down and weak all the time. It doesn't mean that you're struggling to serve the Lord. It doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. What it means is that that you are humble before God, that you want more of God than anything else in your life, that you want more of God than you want of anything else. Nothing else matters. Money doesn't matter. Things doesn't matter. Nothing matters more than humble before God. And people misinterpret that as to meaning that you're just a weak in your spirit, a poor person before God that you just can't make it. I got news for you. The blessings of God are to be envied by those that doesn't understand your humbleness before God. The blessings that God gives you are to be envied by those that don't know God because they can't understand how that God can bless you. They can't understand how that you can face and smile during turmoil and during trouble. They don't understand where joy comes when you're having heartaches. They can't understand that. What did he say? It is to be envied by those. Why? Because we are being blessed by God. Yeah. Being blessed by God. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Huh? There is the kingdom of heaven. I want you to know I plan on going to heaven. Well, thank you, Sister Norma. I'm glad you're coming with me. <laughs> I plan on inheriting heaven. And if I'm going to, I've got to put God first in my life. Above and beyond. God has to be number one. God has to be my focus. And he said, for theirs. He said God's favor and salvation regardless of their outward conditions of 
are poor in spirit, the humble who rate themselves insignificant, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I am nothing without the love of God in my life. I was nothing until I was saved. I was nobody until I was saved. I may not be nobody to anybody, but I am somebody to God. I know that for sure. And you know what? His blessings is upon you if you are humble before Him. He said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. He said, Blessed are they that be happy with a happiness produced, produced the experience of God's favor. You see, we have this thing that when somebody is mourning, that we got to go over there and spiritually uplift them by saying, oh, I feel so bad for you. Oh, I just, I just, I just don't have words to say. I've had it happen to me at the most inopportune places. But that's what we got. You know, the, the idea is that, that when somebody's mourning, we're all mourning. No! The Bible says that we go to them and we encourage them and we tell them that God is in control. We tell them that they're not alone in this thing. That God is on their side and that they will come through and joy shall be theirs. That's what he's talking about. Blessed are those people. He understands the morning. He understands our sorrows. But he said, I'm going to bring joy. I'm going to bring joy. I'm going to bring light after the darkness in your life. He said, blessed are these people. Yes. Oh, listen. Nobody likes to be in mourning. I don't care what it's over. Nobody likes to be in mourning. But God said, blessed. He said, blessed are you because I'm going to comfort you. He said, God's favor and especially conditioned by the revelation of His matchless grace. No one has grace like God. No one understands your mourning like God. No one understands your heartache like God. Oh, don't get down. Oh, don't begin to get low and begin to feel sad and begin to mourn because things ain't going your way. They never went God's way. Either He had to make them go His way. God made them go His way. He did that by speaking to them and speaking them into existence and rebuking them whenever He, he God wanted to save everybody. But it didn't go His way. Not everything's going to go your way. You're not always going to be up here, but I will tell you this. Uh, His grace, uh, His grace uh, is sufficient. Uh, His grace uh, will see you through. Uh, His grace uh, will carry you through. Uh, I never dreamed uh, that I would ever be uh, at a place in my life uh, where all of my family would be gone. Uh, but for real, uh, I never dreamed of that. Uh, I just never thought it could ever happen. Uh, I expected everybody to all go old and die at the same time, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I just, my mom and dad had always been there for me, and I just always figured they're going to be there forever. That's the way, they've always been there, and we just expect them to be there, and, and you know, that's just life. But there are those times.
times of mourning, it was His grace that came through and brought me through and made others on the outside that didn't understand my relationship with God, that didn't understand my love for God. They couldn't understand how God could cause me to smile and God could cause me to have joy in my times of mourning. Said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed, happy, <coughs> joyous, spiritually prosperous. God wants us to grow stronger and spiritually wealthy in our lives every day and in every situation. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. That no matter what you go through, when you come out on the other side, you come out richer in the blessings of God. Amen. That you come out stronger in your relationship with God. You come out with a stronger love for God. And that's, that was God's purpose in life. And he said that salvation, regardless of their outward conditions, the, the meek, the mild, the long-suffering have. Oh, we take a mild person sometimes uh, and we consider a mild uh, personality or a mild person uh, to be a weak person. Because they don't shout as loud as we do. They don't jump up and down like we do. They don't sing as loud as we do. And we take that person sometimes uh, in that weak spirit to be weak. But he said, no, those are the ones that is patient before God. Those are the ones that is patient before God. Those are the ones that, that can wait upon God. Those are the ones I have had to learn to be patient. There's one thing you do not pray for. Don't ask God to make you meek in patience. Please never pray that prayer. <laughs> Because you're fixing to take a ride that you don't want to get on. But I will tell you, whenever you are in that place and you can be patient before God and you can wait upon God and you can trust God and you can believe God, I want you to know joy is yours. The blessings of God are yours when you can be that to the place uh, to where you are patient uh, upon God. We're living in a world uh, everybody wants it right now. <coughs> Just go into a restaurant on a holiday morning about 10 o'clock <laughs> And once you finally get through the line and you've had patience to wait, sometimes I just try to jack in the box. Yeah. <laughs> My patience ain't that long. <laughs> but you watch people in there. They know they've already waited 20, 30 minutes to get in. They know they're going to wait in there. And you just sit back and you just watch people's faces. <laughs> Oh, man. Turn your hearing aid up. Boy, you can hear some things you don't want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> They're grumbling. They're griping. They're complaining. You knew. You already waited 30 minutes just to get this seat. You know you're going to wait. There's too many Christians that want to walk up to God and say, I want it and I want it now. I want it, God, I want it right now. I don't want to wait. I want to be patient. I, I'm your child. You owe it to me. Give it to me. And if you haven't met any of those kind of people, I have. It felt like God just owed them everything, and now I just had to wait. But he said, blessed are those people uh, that are patient. Uh, because I need uh, patience. Uh, and, and it said, uh, long suffering, they shall inherit. 
You see, we're going to be given everything that we need if we will wait upon God. Amen. If we will trust God. I, I'm going to I kind of go back a little bit to yesterday, if you don't mind. To what Brother Carmen said about when he came here. I remember as a little kid going to the original church out there. And let me tell you something. It was worse than my dad's church, and my dad's church was literally falling in. Yeah. But people went there to worship God. They care about God. Yeah. And they went there, and when you get the right person with the right spirit, with the patience before God to wait upon God, God will move. They'd had pastor after pastor over there in that little church, and my brother Carmen, we went there. Uh, all of a sudden, after a few years and waiting upon God and praying, being patient before God, he in inherited and was able to build this building. You see, they say patience is a virtue. That's why the doctor's parking lots are full of BMWs and all that. We're their virtue. But he waited upon God and intended, and, he, and he told yesterday how he come about. When I came here, one question I was asked by a pastor on the outside said, well, uh, are you going to take out a loan to fix that church? I said, I got 14 people. Who's going to loan me any money? <laughs> well, you know, the property's worth something. I said, it might be worth something, but they're going to want their money back. I said, no, we're going to patiently wait upon God. Amen. Patiently wait upon God. Yeah, yes. Not getting excited. Oh, yeah, it would have been nice just to jump in and, and, and hire somebody and give them a half a million dollars to fix it like we wanted, right? We didn't have it. Couldn't do that. But when you're patient and wait upon God, you shall inherit. And today, for those of you that haven't seen next door, we are 100% completely, totally have remodeled from that door to the end of that building. From the floor to the roof. All because the church has been patient to wait upon God. He said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed and fortunate and happy and spiritually prosperous in the state in which the born-again child of God enjoys his favor and salvation. I don't know about you, but I enjoy my salvation. Yes. I don't endure my salvation. Endure means you go do something that you don't want to do. You go sit through lectures that you don't want to sit through and you just sit there and, and you just drain when you leave. But I enjoy. He said, blessed are those people. Uh, fortunate are those. Uh, why? <laughs> Listen, uh, if you hunger and thirst after God, uh, He's going to prosper you spiritually. Uh, but I can promise you this. Uh, he will prosper you in the natural. Uh, he will meet your needs. Uh, he'll meet your finances. Uh, he'll take care of you in every way when we hunger and thirst after God. But what does that mean? Uh, that means that we have to spend uh, some personal time on our knees crying out unto God praying out unto God and then we get in the word of God and begin to read the word and begin to eat the word and begin to take it for what it says and then he said we are going to be happy and spiritually prosperous in that state of the born again child you see, nobody else can experience that if you're not a child of God. <clears throat> that doesn't necessarily mean a, a, a church member ain't necessarily going to be able to enjoy that. Amen. 
Because he says a child of God. Amen. We become a child of God when we give our hearts to him. Amen. And he adopts us into his family. And he said his favor and salvation I said, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Otherwise, we want uprightness and a right standing with God. We want an uprightness. What does that mean? That means that we want to walk in a life pleasing unto God. We want to live a life above reproach. A life above sin. Not a self-righteous spirit, but an uprightness before God that, that people can see God in us. Uh, and that we can touch others' lives. Uh, that's what he said. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I want to live upright before God. Uh, I don't want somebody looking at me uh, saying, oh, well, he, he looks good on the outside, but you ought to know him on the inside. Yeah, he looks good. He looks good on the outside. Sad part about it is there's some people who knows more about our insights than we realize. And I'll tell you something. There's people that are, have more fun talking about your inside than they do your outside. They thrive on talking about what they think they know about you. Sometimes they know it, sometimes they think they know it, and sometimes they just wish they knew it. But I want them to look at me and know that what they see on the outside is a result of, as to what's taking place on the inside. Amen. It's a result of the inside relationship that I have with God. It is the love that I have for God. And he said, you're going to be blessed for that. I'm going to bless you when you hunger and thirst after me. Whenever I am your focus, he said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. He said, blessed, happy to be envied and spiritually prosperous. I love what he said. He throws that in the Amplified Bible. He's throwing that spiritually prosperous. Explain that, preacher. It means that you will do things for God that you can't even imagine you can do. It means that you will worship God in ways that you never dreamed you could worship God. It means to be spiritually prosperous that our minds are focused upon God and that when a need arises, we're ready to pray. Amen. Spiritually Amen. prosperous. He said, I want you to be spiritually prosperous. God never intended for any of his Christian people to be on spiritual welfare. That's right. <laughs> it was not intended that we be in spiritual welfare. Where we're begging God for everything we get. He wants us to be in a place with Him where He pours those blessings upon us and we just have them. And He gives them to us freely. And he wants us to have them. Uh, he doesn't have any. He does, God doesn't have any welfare, kids. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. That's right. If you're living, I'm going to get in trouble talking to <laughs> If you're living the spiritual life of a spiritual welfare case. Where you don't have anything spiritually, and every time you turn around, you're just begging God, then there's a reason for that. Right. <clears throat> it's because you are not spending any time at work on your knees before God. 
crying out unto God. Yeah. If you're going to have anything in life, then you've got to put something into it. If you want the blessings of God, then you've got to put something into it. And it goes back to worshiping God. It goes back to seeking the righteousness of God. Hungering and thirsting after God. When you do that, God will raise you. I love to hear cases of people that... And, and, don't nobody misunderstand me. I'm, I'm not knocking welfare. Now, please, before somebody says, oh, I know what he can do. I'm not doing that. But I love to hear those cases uh, where a little mother, uh, maybe a couple of kids uh, that has struggled uh, and has had to have assistance uh, and she's had to have help. And if you have to have help, God is your help, right? I'm going to tell you that right now. Amen. But spiritually, we shouldn't have to live to that place to where we just have, have our hand out to God all the time. Instead of having them out like this, they should be up like this. But nothing makes me happier than to hear a testimony of a young mother that said, you know what? My husband left to have my two kids. I lost my job and I had to go on welfare and I had to stay there. And, and, and that's where it was. But thank God, I got me a job at Circle K. And I worked there and I worked there. And I saved and I did what I could. And now I've got me a little apartment. It ain't much, but it's mine. And I'm paying for it. You know what she's doing? She's prospering. Yes. I said she's prospering. She's pulled herself up out of that situation. Oh, she's not where she wants to be. She don't have everything she wants. But I want you to know somehow she's so far from where she was that she's happy to be there. I don't know about you. I'm so far from where I was when I wasn't serving God to where I am now. I want you to know something. I feel like a millionaire in God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall call, be called the children of God. Blessed, enjoying inevitable happiness. And I don't want to say it Spiritually prosperous. With life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor, salvation, regardless of your outward conditions, are the makers and maintainers of, of peace. For they shall be called the sons of God. Peacemakers. Doesn't say nothing about troublemakers. It says peacemakers. <laughs> yeah. Peacemakers. Yes. When you think about that, that's a very powerful word. Amen. On the other hand, you flip that coin. I don't know about you, how many of you are going to throw me? <laughs> I will tell you this, the troublemakers I know has no friends. <laughs> Nobody loves them. You know, they, 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 can, uh, you know, they can be like that little kid that said, you know, nobody loves me. They got this going to go off over here and say, I need worms and die. <laughs> A troublemaker is that way in life. They're marked. You see them coming, you won't go the other way. But he said, blessed are the peacemakers. Those that, that brings love. Uh, those that brings joy. Those that brings comfort uh, to someone's life. Uh, those that, that has an understanding ear. Uh, those that is willing to hear uh, what's happening in someone's life uh, and sharing with them the peace and the love of God uh, without running around uh, and spreading it all over God's creation. A peacemaker, or so-called peacemaker, never solved one problem for anybody by gossiping to someone else. Yeah. They were really didn't. But he said, bless God, the peacemakers, those that love one another, those that love God, a peacemaker will see you in your faults and will love you through them. 
peacemaker in World War. My mother was a peacemaker. My dad was too, but his was with a switch to a belt. <laughs> That's how my dad made peace. But my mom was a peacemaker. My mom would set us down and she would say, and she'd always do this. And I think about, I think about it, about how God was thinking. She would always sit us down whenever we'd been into it, we'd been fussing and fighting with five of us, man. You know, you could get a real circus going and fight kids fighting. <laughs> Especially when the two little ones thought they were angels. <laughs> Mom would sit us all down in the living room and she'd say, listen. You're breaking my heart. My mom could say anything to me, but don't tell me I was breaking her heart. <laughs> don't do that, mom. But she would begin to sit down and she would begin to tell us, this is not how God wants us. He wants us to be able to disagree, but still love one another. He wants us to be able to have our differences, but still love one another. And boy, when she got through talking, man, I could have crawled in between the cushions of the couch, man. I feel so bad. But you know what? She broke that. And peace. And in the next few minutes, we'd all be playing together. She knew how to break the peace. Dad come home, and five of us had been fighting. His peacemaking was all of the window of the bed. <laughs> y'all gonna get it. And one of them would say, I, did, I, I wasn't really involved. Well, you know what? You're all guilty. And that was his way of making peace. I think sometimes how God looks down on us and says, Man, can't you just play together good? Can't, can't, you, just, can't you just play good together? <laughs> He said, blessed are those. He said, blessed are ye when men revile you and persecute you. And you shall say, man, all manner of evil against you. Falsely, for my name's sake. He said. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you. And they say these things about you. Falsely. You know what he's saying? He's saying, you are one of my chosen. You are one of my chosen. And how many of you know good people get picked on more than bad people? Good people get lied on more than bad people. Good people get ridiculed more. You know what he's saying? Just remember this. If they're doing that, you're doing something right. right. If they're saying those things about you, then you're doing something right. Just keep doing what you're doing. And I tell you today, let's just keep doing what we're doing. Because God is blessing us. Why? Because we are a blessed people. The blessings of the Beatitudes is upon us. God's blessings is upon us. His presence is upon us. And He does that. Why? To honor those that are faithful and just unto Him. Amen. When He comes into our service, and Brother John said this morning, what a sweet spirit. When, when of worship this morning, you can feel the presence of God. You know why? God does that on those that He loves. Amen. That is part of what He's talking about. One, one of those spiritual things. One of those spiritual prosperous things. That when all of us is going wrong, you can sit in service and enjoy the singing as you lift your hands and feel the presence of God coming down. Why? Because he said, I will bless you prosperously. I don't, as I've said before, 
you know what, if you don't have two nickels in your pocket to rub together, but you've got the peace of God in your heart, friends, you've got everything. If you have the love of God in your hearts, if you are spiritually prosperous in God, God blesses you. God speaks with you. And God is in relationship with you. It don't matter whether you have any money or not. Because when it comes time for you to need it, He'll provide it. Amen. He'll provide it. But He said, prosper. He said, I want you to prosper. He said, prosperously, spiritually, prosperously. Uh, and we are uh, and, and we're moving forward for God uh, spiritually. Why? Because God is our focus. Yes. Yeah. Nothing else matters except what God wants. This is not about what I want or what we want. This is what God wants. We want what God wants. And he said then, he said, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before thee. If you think that you got saved, and God just put this little wall around you, and you're going to go through life just you know, floating on a little spiritual cloud. Uh, I got news for you. Somebody will come kick that cloud out from under you and you're going to fall. The jets is going to fly by and knock it out from under you. You're going down. But he said, let it be you known. We're going to be persecuted. We're going to be talked about. I don't know, laugh at you once in a while. But he said, blessed are you. Because when they're looking at you and they're persecuting you, they're saying things to you. You know why they're doing it? It's because they know, they know that you are a child of God. Yeah. They know it. They see it. You belong to God. And he just says, stand up and take it. I just keep going. As I said the other day, there were some of us here in the church uh, some time back were persecuted pretty good by some things. Hit pretty hard. But you know what we did? We chose to stand firm. Yes. We chose to trust God. We chose to focus upon God. Did it feel good? No. Would you would I rather not have it? Yeah. But it did. But I had to focus upon God. And then I realized that God's children can be Attacked by Satan, but they can't be destroyed by it. Amen. You see, God is a good God. We are blessed people this morning, church. I say we are a blessed people. His blessings is upon us. Listen, I don't care. Don't listen. When you talk about being blessed, look at your life spiritually first. Sometimes we look at blessings as being in the natural. We look at the natural things of life. We look at how much money we got, or the kind of job we got, or the house we live in, the clothes we wear, and the shoes we wear, or whatever. And that's what we look at as how well we're being blessed to God. That has not, that, that's not it. When you begin to count your blessings, count your spiritual blessings. Yes. Count that one and foremost as the day that you give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. That second one is when you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And then all of those things that add. And I guarantee you, 
you'll look at being blessed in a whole different picture. It'll take on a holy meaning to you. Church, we're blessed. I said, we are blessed. I guarantee you, there's, you know, there's, there might be, but for the most part, there's probably, probably everybody here, there's probably something that maybe that you'd like to have that you don't have. And I'm not talking about great big or whatever. I know any of that many gets a magazine in the mail. He looks through it and thinks of things he'd like to have. <laughs> uh, I do too. I get my Cabela's book, magazine, and I... <laughs> but I can have everything that they had in that store, but I would not be blessed if I did not have God. We are blessed with God, folks. You know what? When the Bible said, His blessings make it one rich and addeth no sorrow. A lot of people leave that last word off of there. But that last word means more than anything else. God, take my sorrow. Would you stand with me this morning? Sister Bertha, would you just come this morning? I'll tell you something, folks. We are blessed. I have said, and I'll say it again, if God has never done or does another thing for me, I am blessed. And I will spend the rest of my life being blessed. But I know as long as I am blessed, as long as I'm spiritually blessed, God is going to bless me in every other aspect of my life. Doesn't mean I get everything I want. Doesn't mean I like everything I get. But it means this. For God will give the Bible said. Only good things comes from God. Yes. So God's not going to give me anything back when we're blessed with God. I'm just overwhelmed with the blessings of God. So I, I look back and tomorrow will be Tuesday. It'll be four years and five months. Since we come to those doors and to see what God has done, you know what? I could, if I could, I can't even ever imagine myself doing it. If I thought if I could ever even imagine myself backsliding, I couldn't do it. I just have to think about what God has done in four and a half years. I wouldn't even have to go back any farther than that to know that God is real and He can be real in your life. If you need something from God this morning, I want you to come. We want to pray for you. It don't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. Maybe you don't have the money to pay your rent in the morning. God can provide it when the time is due. It may be your death. You may need another vehicle. I'm just saying, it doesn't matter. God wants to bless His people. Blessed. If you have a need of any kind, you're doing battle with the kids. God is the peacemaker. We're going to pray for Brother McGarry. Brother Lenny, would you come? A man that has been blessed above and beyond. He's, he shared a lot of his life.
life with me. But you know something? His physical condition is not standing. It's not standing in focus of Jesus. It's not hindering his walk because he knows he's been blessed and God's going to bless him again. Would you stretch forth your hand? Father God, in the name of Jesus.
we're standing out at the funeral. I think everybody thought he was crying over Brother Donnie Jones dying. <laughs> he was he was crying because the presence of the Lord was upon him and he was feeling the morning. So be here tonight. Invite somebody. Come expecting to see God do great things. So.